Hi, good afternoon. I'm Kaylin, a marketing liaison for Western Vascular Institute. I'm here with Dr. Dalton Olson, and we're going to talk about carotid artery disease. So, Dr. Olson, what is carotid artery disease? So, first of all, carotid arteries are the main blood flow or the main vessels in the neck that supply the brain. So, when we get blockages in that artery, there's concern for embolization, which means some of that plaque can build up in the artery and then fly to the brain, and we have a stroke or a warning sign of a stroke. All right. So what are some of the symptoms associated with carotid artery disease? Uh, so most of the time, patients are asymptomatic. They don't have any symptoms, and they're unaware that they have narrowing in those arteries. Uh, typically, people come in with other complaints, and then during their exam, their doctor may find a noise at their neck, and that's called a brewery, and that may signal that there's some narrowing there. Or people are symptomatic, and they have warning signs where they have slurring of speech, or unable to find the words that they're searching for. They may have weakness on one side of the body or the other, um, numbness on one side of the body. Um, so those are important things. They can also lose vision in a portion of their eye and then maybe it returns or maybe it doesn't. But those are some of the symptoms. Um, the other thing is that people who have peripheral disease or coronary disease, so blockages in their legs or blockages in their heart, are at higher risk of having crowded disease as well. And so those patients we would look for uh, for evidence of blockages just because of that baseline history. Okay. Um, what are some of the risk factors for carotid artery disease? Okay, so risk factors include um, high cholesterol, hypertension, our blood pressure is not controlled, uh, smoking, all of those things can injure the vessel and then that creates uh, an area where the plaque can lay down more easily and build up an uh, area of narrowing. Okay, and what treatment options do patients have for carotid artery disease? Okay, so uh, initially medical management is often instituted. Um, patients can be started on uh, lipid lowering agents, so something that will decrease their cholesterol. They will be on blood pressure medicine to help control their, their blood pressure. Um, we would say controlling their diabetes as well. Uh, often started on a medication that affects the platelets, like something called aspirin or Plavix is helpful. And then if you smoke, we would encourage smoking cessation. Okay, and can you tell us a little bit about the TCAR procedure? Sure, well actually I'll tell you about both ways to manage okay. carotid disease. Um, so uh, the tried and true way of managing carotid disease is something called carotid endarterectomy. First procedure was done in the 1960s by a surgeon named Dr. DeBakey. And that procedure has been uh, favored for several decades. The procedure entails that we make an incision on the front of your neck right here, on the, well, on the side of your neck, overlying the muscle here. We uh, cut down to the artery, we find the artery, we clamp it above and below, we remove the plaque, and then we put a patch to make the vessel wider. Now, during that procedure, you have to be careful because of manipulation of the artery. You don't want embolization to occur. And what it helps to protect it during the procedure is we clamp the artery beyond the plaque first, and that would be our protection during that procedure. Um, there's also risk of nerve injury because there's important nerves in that area, and we're very careful to when we proceed with that uh, intervention. Now, that is, has been the treatment for several decades and mo works well for most patients. But in the recent years, they've come up with something called TCAR, which is transcervical carotid uh, artery surgery or stenting. And what that actually combines is a small incision at the base of the neck and stenting. Carotid artery stenting in the past was always done through the groin, but there are risks with that. And they actually found that that was uh, uh, patients that were over 80 years old were actually at higher risk of embolization those who you would think would benefit from a procedure that you could keep them awake actually did worse. So with the TCAR procedure, we don't have to do all that manipulation to get up to the artery. Instead, we make a small incision on the neck. It can be done awake or asleep. Either way, it's done in the operating room. And then we puncture the artery directly. The protection that we use here, we don't clamp the artery beyond the plaque. Instead, we put a little filter down at the groin and we connect those two areas and that reverses the flow. So as we do our procedure here, 
the uh, any any plaque that may come loose would go down to that filter and would not go to the brain. So um, that procedure is very beneficial for people who have already had surgery on the neck, radiation on the neck, uh, patients who are at higher risk for surgery. So they have a significant heart disease or lung disease, uh, something called CHF, or a patient that's had a recent heart attack. Also, just because of anatomical reasons, if they have a very high uh, area of disease that isn't easy to get to with an open incision, this is a very good procedure for them. And with both procedures, patients typically leave the next day. The risk of stroke is similar at 1.4% uh, and 1.2% for each of those procedures, so it's, it's well recognized and well received. Okay, and I know that you worked on one not too long ago. So. Oh yeah, we uh, um, we do that here in our practice, and th and after maybe after this uh, live broadcast, you guys can see a couple of the pictures. You'll see the narrowing in the artery before treatment, and how the vessel is very small and diseased and irregular. And then you'll see the artery afterward after it's been stented. Um, and hopefully we can show some images of the plaque that was actually trapped in the filter. And again, that would have been debris that normally would have gone to the brain, but that's how it was prevented in this procedure with reversing the flow. Uh, so yeah, I hope you find it interesting. Yeah, we'll be showing those pictures after this Facebook Live. And so look forward to those. And I want to thank Dr. Olson for joining us. Thank you. Yeah.